Let me show you how to make flower jewelry with UV resin and silicone molds. First, I have clean molds and dried flowers ready on the table. I just used a bit of packing tape on all my molds to make sure they're clean. And here's my bottle of UV resin. This is counterculture DIY UV resin. I'm starting with a thin layer in each mold cavity. And I'm using the tip of my resin bottle to spread out a small amount of resin across the surface area of the inside of the mold. And this is gonna be the very bottom layer of each pendant for the earring or the necklace. I'm only using the smaller mold cavities because the larger ones are a little bit too big in my opinion for jewelry, but they are good for keychains. But since I'm not making keychains today, I'm only going to do a layer in each of the small molds. Making these pendants layer by layer will prevent a lot of bubbles from forming and also it'll allow the resin to cure a little bit faster. If your resin layer is very thick, it can take a very very long time for the UV lamp to get it to cure. So I do recommend going thin, just so the process is a little bit faster. Now I've poured all my first layers and I'm using my skewer to move the bubbles away from the silicone mold. Bubbles like to cling to the silicone and it makes it really difficult to pop them. So I'm just moving the bubbles around away from the silicone and into the center of the resin. I'll then use my heat gun to pop the bubbles and it'll make it a lot easier after I've moved them. Now I'm taking my heat gun and going over each mold cavity to pop the bubbles that I've moved. And you don't want to keep the heat gun on the resin or the mold for too long. You just want to use it for short periods of time and very quickly. Too much heat on silicone or on your resin could result in a wavy resin layer or it can damage your mold. For the really small mold cavities, like the smallest ones that I have, it's very hard for the heat gun to really do anything because of the small size and the heat can't really get through and the air can't really blow through. So for those, the best way to get rid of bubbles is to just use your skewer and scoop it out and put it on a napkin. Now I'm grabbing my UV lamps so that my resin can cure. I have a bunch of these little lamps that I love very much and they're only a few dollars on Amazon but my favorite thing about them is their on and off switch is five minutes long so I don't have to keep coming back and pressing the on switch over and over again. Most UV lamps that I have used in the past only have a one minute long on and off switch so i really like these even though i have to use so many of them and i usually plug them all in into a usb outlet and i just wanted to show you guys in case you were wondering but obviously you can always get a bigger lamp so i'm gonna let my resin cure for about five minutes until the lamps turn off and come back and work on my next layer my uv lamps have turned off and my layer should be cured by now so i'm gonna take my lamps away and start on my next layer i'm basically doing the same thing that i did for the first layer and pouring in a thin layer of resin in each mold cavity. After I finish pouring my resin in, I'll get rid of the bubbles with my heat gun and my skewer like I did with the first layer, and then start adding in my dried flowers.
Now my resin is ready for the dried flowers. So I'm gonna add in my flowers to each mold and I'm just going with the flow. I don't really have a plan, but a few of these are gonna be earrings. So that's why I'm making two of the same ones. And a few things to keep in mind, just make sure that your flowers are completely dried. These flowers, I didn't dry them myself. I actually got them off Amazon. So you can buy flowers that are already pressed and dried if you want, or you can dry and press them yourself. You do want your flowers to be pretty flat since these molds are very thin. I'm going to continue to add in my flowers into each mold until they're all filled up the way that I want them. I've placed all my flowers in my resin, so now I'm placing my UV lamp over the molds and letting them cure for about another 5 minutes. Now that my resin is cured, I'm removing the UV lamps and I'm going to get started on my third layer. So this layer is going to be a little bit different and it's going to be more like a thin coating over the flowers rather than a full layer of resin. And that's because the flowers will produce a lot of bubbles. It will emit a lot of bubbles than if you were to do just a completely clear layer. So instead of doing a full layer of resin, doing a coating will help the bubbles release a little bit easier and it will help you get rid of the bubbles as well. And sometimes what happens is if you do a very thick layer on top of an uncoated flower, bubbles can be produced while the resin is curing too. So sometimes you get a trap bubble that wasn't there when you poured the resin, but it appeared as it was curing. So instead of doing a very thick layer, just doing a coating over each flower will help protect it and seal it down so that your final layer won't be all bubbly. Now I'm taking my heat gun to pop any bubbles that formed in this little coating that I did over the flowers. If you're using roses or daisies like I am, you'll notice that most of the bubbles do form in the center of the daisy and in between the rose petals. Now I'm gonna grab my UV lamps and place them over the molds to let this layer cure and I'll be back in about five minutes to do the last layer. Now my resin is cured and I'm gonna work on my last layer. I'm pouring a small amount of resin into each mold cavity so that the flower is completely encased. And it's not really necessary to go all the way to the top of the mold. You just wanna make sure your flower is completely covered and that's really good enough. If you do go all the way to the top because you want a thicker piece, just try not to overflow.
Now I'm ready to cure this last layer, so I'm placing my UV lamps over the molds. And this last layer, I would say, takes about 10 minutes to cure just for good measure. Before you demold, you do want to make sure that your pieces are completely cured and they're not sticky. Now my resin is cured and I'm going to start demolding my pieces. So this is the fun part and I'm just popping each piece out of the mold and placing them on the table. Now that I've demolded all my resin pieces, I'm flipping them upside down and placing my UV lamp over them just to make sure everything is fully cured because sometimes the backside can be a little bit sticky after I demold them. So here's all my resin pieces. I made a few more afterwards, but now I'm gonna top coat them. And you can see that each piece is not completely flat. It has a little bit of a lip and it's kind of concave. It caves in in the middle and that's pretty normal with any kind of resin piece because the resin tends to shrink. Before I get started on my top coats, I'm gonna prepare my pieces by trimming any excess edges off. I have a pair of sharp scissors and a plastic cup that's gonna function as my trash bin. And I'm just looking at each piece and checking for any sharp edges, any jagged edges, anything uneven and sticking out so that I can cut it off. And it's not gonna be like that for every piece, it's just probably a few pieces that are uneven along the edges. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim off any areas that need to be flattened. This is because if any edges are uneven or sticking out, my top coat won't stay in place properly and it won't look that nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of the pieces and make sure they're ready for the top coat. Thank you. 
Now my pieces are ready and this is what it should look like. It should be a pretty flat edge all the way across without anything sticking out and the lip is gonna hold that top coat in place. I've spread out my pieces on the table so that I can top coat them. And I have my UV resin and I'm dropping a big dab of resin at the center of each piece. There isn't really an exact amount, you just want to put enough to cover that top surface area. And it's always better to start with a little bit less and add a few more drops if you feel like you need to. You just want to try not to overflow your resin because it can spill over and it can be very frustrating if that happens. But if it does happen, that's totally okay and it's completely fixable. You should just wipe the piece off with a paper towel and use some alcohol and get all of the sticky resin off and start over. Because resin is very thick, it's self-leveling, so I can add a big dab of resin at the center and it will level itself out and spread on its own. So I'm going to continue to top coat until I get all of my pieces. I put a top coat on all my pieces and now I'm going to go back and put a drop of resin anywhere I feel like the top coat needs a little bit more of a domed look. Now I'm going to pop my bubbles using a lighter and I'm just putting the flame over the resin very quickly. I don't want to keep it in one place for too long, don't want to burn anything and it will get rid of any bubbles in the resin. Now I'm going to place my lamps over my pieces to cure that top coat and it should take about 5 to 10 minutes and you want to cure it until it's no longer sticky. My pieces are cured now and all of them are top coated and ready for adding on hardware. So here's how they look. You can see now they look pretty flat. They don't have that concave center like they used to. Before I add on my hardware, I'm just going to organize all of my pieces and decide which ones I want to be pairs of earrings and which ones I want to be necklaces so that I have some kind of mental plan and vision of how I want things to look. Now that I have my pieces roughly organized, I'm gonna start adding on my hardware. I have a small drill bit in my drill and I'm gonna drill a hole on the side of my piece. My drill bit is a 1.5 millimeter size and I'm gonna drill a shallow hole to fit my eye pin in. I don't wanna go too deep since my pin is only a few millimeters long. I dabbed a bit of alcohol on my paper towel and I'm wiping the hole clean. And then I'm grabbing my UV resin and putting a drop of it on this plastic case. I'm taking my eye pin and putting the screw part into the resin. 
I just want the resin to coat the screw area and then I'm gonna place the screw into the hole that I drilled. I'm gonna twist that into my piece and because I put resin there, that white drill mark that I created is gonna disappear. This will also allow the screw to be secured a little bit better. So I'm gonna place this under the UV lamp and let it cure and repeat the process for all of my pieces. Now all my pieces have an eye pin attached to them and I'm gonna open up this earring hoop and place the circle part of the eye pin into that loop. And then I'm closing it with my pliers. I'm gonna repeat this process for all of my earrings, but I'm gonna try to change it up and challenge myself to make a variety of different designs. For this pair, I have a little crystal chain that I'm gonna dangle the piece from. So I'm first putting the chain on the earring loop and then I'm gonna attach the resin piece to the bottom of the chain. For this next pair, I'm dabbing a bit of UV resin onto earring backings and then placing it on the smaller earring studs that I made. And I've also attached matching large hexagons to those little baby hexagons just by looping those eye screws together. While my resin is curing for those earrings, I'm gonna put together a few other earrings. For this pair, I'm opening up the eye pin and placing the top earring post into the loop and then closing the loop with my pliers. And I'm adding a gold leaf charm to the bottom eye pin. And this is how it turned out. Because I put two eye pins in the resin piece, I was able to dangle something at the bottom of it as well. For this next pair of earrings, I'm doing a very similar design. And now at the top eye pin, I'm going to open the loop up and put in the same little dainty rhinestone stud and close the loop to complete this pair of earrings. And here's how that turned out. I love the little butterflies. The earrings that were curing under the UV light are ready now, so I want to show you how those turned out. And the double stacked earrings are so cute, I really really like them. So I continued to put all my earrings together one by one, trying to make them look unique and one of a kind with different personalities. And I have a few pieces left that I'm going to turn into necklaces. So I have a little necklace clasp and I'm going to place the eye pin loop through the clasp and then thread the necklace chain through that clasp. And the little clasp makes the necklace look a little bit more elegant. So I'm going to continue to do that for all of my necklace pendants. So now I'm all done with this jewelry making session and here's all the earrings and necklaces that I made. Let me know which one is your favorite. 
For me, my favorite is this pair with the gold leaves and the white dainty flowers. I also love the double stacked pieces and the leaves in the resin are really, really cool. I love that. And here's a few more of my favorite picks. I really hope this video helps and thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye!